Hi there, my name's Peter Coffin, and uh, in my opinion, the only excusable reason to stop traffic is uh, looking this good. Mm. So you might say to yourself, oh, well, you know, political reasons are good reasons to stop traffic. Like, I don't know, advocacy for the Palestinian people who are at very least living in an open air prison and at most are experiencing genocide. I don't know, take your pick, but uh, reality starts at the open air prison one. So that establishes that I ostensibly agree with pro-Palestine protesters, right? So why do I hate this? Palestine will live forever! Palestine will live forever! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! So if you're unaware, that is the Holland Tunnel. It is one of the few ways that New York and New Jersey are connected. A lot of people who work in New York also live in New Jersey. And the vast majority of those people are not Wall Street bankers, they are not statesmen, they are not the head of a major corporate or state institution. In fact, most of those people just trying to live. And I keep pissing off people whom I ostensibly agree with on issues like, say, Palestine, although we'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. I keep pissing them off because I think that this is stupid. I think this is bad. I think it's ineffective. I think it's a waste of energy. And I think it looks ridiculous. But Peter, the politics of politeness are never going to get us anywhere. Blah, 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 blah. You know what rhymes with dumbass? You know, the thing that people who say shit like that are? Um, class. When you protest or demonstrate, you're doing one of two things. Firstly, you're attempting to impede, or secondly, you're attempting to educate. Now, somebody's immediate reaction would be, why can't it be both? Well, it should be both, actually. Uh, ideally, it would be both. I'm just saying that those are the reasons that you protest, right? So then you have to ask, who is the target? Who are you trying to impede or who are you trying to educate? Well, if you want to effectively accomplish anything, you would want to do both of these things on a class basis. If you were working to impede, you would want to impede the class that is actually causing the problems. And if you wanted to educate, you would want to educate the subordinate class. In our case, the bourgeoisie, the owning class, or the capitalists, versus the subordinate class, or classes, depending on how you're talking, but the workers, the people who create value or otherwise don't own the means of production. I just call it the subordinate class and leave it at that. So back in December, I was out in Portland, Oregon, which I've been told that I've been saying wrong by people who live out there. They keep telling me it's Oregon, like Oregon, you know, like, in a gotta da vida, baby, that type of organ. Or, um, the things inside you that, uh, perform bodily functions. But I keep saying Oregon, and I think it's my accent. You see, I'm from Michigan. But anyway, I was out in Oregon slash Oregon with CPI, the Center for Political Innovation, the political organization I'm a part of, and we went out and did a bunch of pro-Palestine demonstrating. Now, we specifically thought about it ahead of time and said, our point today is education. We went out with a message of, Palestinians are not our enemies. It's the people in charge here. The same people who allocate our tax dollars to send 6,000 bombs into our residential area in Palestine, as well as employ the use of white phosphorus. That money could be used for jobs. It could be used for infrastructure projects. That money could be used for health care. That money could be used for anything in all of the desperate areas of the United States. But because the United States is an imperialist state and Israel is a satellite that functions on behalf of it as an outpost in the Middle East, that money is instead going towards making a certain ethnicity of people's lives much worse. The way we went about things was designed to reach everyday people who are dealing with issues of their own and attempt to 
direct their interest towards U.S. imperialism and its consequences both worldwide and domestically. These folks, on the other hand, and really everybody who stops traffic to protest the ruling class, despite the fact that, statistically speaking, most of the time they will not stop the ruling class in traffic, these folks are punishing the everyday person for existing in a world in which the ruling class does bad things. So they're impeding everyone, meaning, statistically, they're mostly impeding the subordinate class. The ruling class doesn't give a shit. But let's say the goal of holding up traffic is actually about education. We're trying to educate all of these subordinate class folks about this issue. Well, the thing you're actually teaching them is that people who think this are also tremendously infuriating and don't care about them. You don't care about the fact that they have a job, a schedule, you don't value their time. What you care about is stopping them from going about their day. Now, as much as I rail about empathy as a form of politics, I'm actually a, a fairly empathetic person. I, I want to know why people do this kind of thing. It confuses me because I see protesting as a tool to do one of those two things, ideally both. And in order to do those, you have to understand who sees, who is impeded, what is being said, etc. So I asked my friend Caleb Maupin, actually, why he thought people think this is doing something. And his initial answer to me was actually about who is funding these types of protests. And I think that it's important to know that type of stuff. I'm sure he'll probably talk about that on his channel, which maybe go check that out if you're curious for that type of stuff. But I had to kind of push a little bit and say, that's not really what I'm talking about. What do the genuine people amongst this group, because there are definitely some cynical actors. There may even be some people who were just asked to do it as a favor or in exchange for something. I mean, paid protesters is not an unheard of thing, not saying that these people are that, but I am saying that what I'm interested in is only what these genuine people who think that they're doing something important think when they're doing something like this. And the answer I eventually got from him was it's a weather underground viewpoint. The weather underground was kind of a fringe political group in the 1960s and 70s that advocated that workers were reactionary and enemies of the revolution. You see, the masses, the people out there, they're bad. They're sheep and they benefit from imperialism, those baddie bads. And for genuine people who legitimately think that this is a useful thing to engage with, ultimately are coming from a position that punishing those people who don't understand imperialism, who just go along with things because they're the everyday baddie, punishing those people is doing something. Because eventually, they'll respond to the punishment and get it. And then they'll take up arms against the government, maybe, or whatever they think is going to happen. I don't really know. I mentioned this in my last video about the Epstein list. But, like, punitive justice has basically proven to not work. If you go through all the research, the actual logging of results uh, shows that it only really reproduces the same result. Like, ultimately, these people think the bulk of the population is the enemy. Um, who else thinks that? Well, um, the ruling class, the capitalists, the tiny number of people that own and control everything. And it seems pretty obvious why they see the bulk of the population as the enemy. Um, in terms of class, they are the enemy. But this is why, to me, it's really important to be doing stuff that's nothing like this. There are quite a few people who are at this protest, you can see. There's a bunch of people sitting down and blocking traffic to the point where there needs to be some kind of a police escort. But having a small number of people volunteer to go around and talk to lots of people with a banner up or a megaphone or something, but just be willing to engage 
with large numbers of people walking around, seeing tons of different people, uh, it's just completely different. The message that we got out in Portland with CPI was the money that should go to help you is instead going to bomb the ever-loving hell out of innocent people. We didn't impede anybody, we didn't get in anybody's way, but we said to working class, subordinate class people that the ruling class is doing an injustice that affects both them and the people of Palestine. We had almost no one respond negatively to us. And one of the people was just some Thought Slime fan. And I'm not joking, there was actually a Thought Slime fan walking around in Portland calling us tankies. Like this guy walked up to this group of people that was listening to us talk and said, don't listen to them, they're tankies. And they actually said the name Mildred in public. That group of people was not very responsive. You see, in their mind, this was just some person who was telling them not to listen uh, about the crimes of a class that they could very clearly see is making their lives worse, as well as the lives of people in Palestine. Normal, everyday people who were walking around, likely between jobs because it was raining, people weren't out for leisure, it was cold as shit and rainy, and we were soaking wet by the time we got done. It didn't take a bunch of money, it took no permits, it just took a little bit of time and some understanding that people are willing to engage with information. And the information we were putting out that day effectively demonstrated the shared interests of both the people of the United States, the working class people, and the people of Palestine. Can you imagine if we just went around, like, pointing a bullhorn at people and saying, FUCK YOU, SUPPORT PALESTINE! Well, that's essentially what this kind of protest is. Because it's not doing anything to effectively impede the ruling class. When the people that are impeded by stopping traffic are mostly people from the subordinate class. Statistically, that is impossible to ignore. If you're interested in any of that kind of thing, consider joining the Center for Political Innovation or even just subscribing to Caleb Maupin's YouTube channel. But to me, I just think that it's really important to understand what you're doing. A big part of that is asking what is the probable effect or even what is the historical effect as we look back to previous protests like this. Pretty much every single one of these stopping traffic protests has resulted in people angry at the protesters because they're just holding up their lives. It makes the battle into the protesters versus the people in their cars. Uh, and the people in their cars have no special allegiance to anyone. They have a job or a place they need to go. That's why they're in their fucking car. The amount of people who are just driving around because it's fun and they like pissing off environmentalists is near zero, if not zero. But once you find out what the effect is, then you need to ask the class question. Is that effect something that we want to happen to either class? And if it is, maybe that's a useful action. If it's not, maybe it's not. Anyways, that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that crap. Uh, I hope you have a good day.